Hey there folks, Brandon here. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite tabletop RPG of all time, Masks A New Generation. In this video, I'll be talking about why I love this game and why you should try to get it to your table as fast as superhumanly possible. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way first. Masks is a game by Brendan Conway about young superheroes in the vein of X-Men or Teen Titans or Young Avengers or Champions or any of those wonderful comics. It's published by Magpie Games and you can get it right here. You can also get it in PDF on DriveThruRPG, right here. It uses the Apocalypse World Engine, which is a super intuitive but powerful set of storytelling tools that I'm going to be talking a lot about in upcoming videos. It's a slim little volume at 208 pages, but it packs a punch. I'm in four campaigns right now, and one of them has been going on for a year and a half, and I'm really not having any sort of trouble of overlap or sameness. These stories are able to feel really radically different in ways that the page count just does not suggest. So it's a game that you can get, look at, learn a little bit about, and be in building stories, which is phenomenal because that's obviously exactly what we want to be doing when we're thinking about comic books. I'm a huge fan of superhero comics, and finding a system that would really be able to play the stories that I truly love to read has been a huge struggle for the entire time I've been in the tabletop gaming hobby. So, what makes Masks better than other superhero games? For one, the mechanics are designed from the ground up to capture the feeling both of capes having fights and teenagers struggling to understand their new identities. While that's certainly not new for superhero comics, and there's plenty of stories that focus in on the emotional lives of young people, having those two things in one place really just works. There's a reason that every time Marvel does a huge reboot, they make a whole bunch of teen superheroes. Teen superheroes are awesome. And Masks understands what makes these stories awesome. It looks at the things that make the heroes heroic and makes the characters cool and makes the teenagers, you know, emotionally. Lots of other superhero games miss the mark because it doesn't focus on story and instead they focus on just modeling superpowers on the standard assumptions of role-playing games. We're gonna need a lot of combat stats. Gotta understand distance. If we don't understand distance, how can we tell if they're punching each other? If I don't understand how fast Superman can fly in the rain, how could I possibly tell an interesting and compelling story? The rules are all built to essentially be the best panels in your comic. It's the moment where the two heroes collide and you directly engage a threat. Or it's the time that Spider-Man just has to push and hold the building up, although it's all collapsing, and he has to unleash his powers. Or it's the second where you just get a little bit tricksy and you provoke someone into doing something they shouldn't. Or the time that people just break down and show their emotions. Because all of these games should have that. Those are the best times in a comic book. By putting those moves first, by making those the basic moves the skeleton of your game, it ensures you're going to be hitting all of those moments in a real way. The moves are also designed so that they have a fictional trigger and interesting fictional outcomes. So instead of just saying, you do 30 damage to his armor, you're instead saying, how has this affected your opponent emotionally and their ability to stay in the fight? Have you taken the upper ground? Have you gotten something from them? Like, what has changed in the fight environment so that you're not just smacking your sword against the person until the goblin's out of HP? The entire game is built around this. Every single time a roll is made, something changes, and the GM has really explicit instructions to make sure that those changes aren't the same exact changes every time. Even if you never play Masks, even if Teenage Superheroes has no appeal to you, if you've never played a Powered by the Apocalypse game, you 
owe it to yourself to read the GM section at least. Masks has a brilliant one, and if you have an understanding of comics, even just from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you'll be able to put together how those different moves function and work together to build this growing, rolling story. Every piece of this game shows the same love for comics and for superheroes. Even looking at the history of Halcyon City, the default setting for Masks, you can see a love for comics. There's some history and included NPCs which you can use or not at your own discretion. I tend not to use them, but part of that is that I tend to be streaming or podcasting and thinking about merch. But it gives you a jumping off point, and more importantly, it gives you a structure for how different generations of heroes have existed. Teenage superheroes are only interesting insofar as they're interacting with older heroes that are more established. It isn't really a super cool thing to focus in on how Kamala Khan is dealing with being a superhero if we can't also look at Captain Marvel and have that relationship between them. Furthermore, is there anything cooler than Spider-Man talking to Captain America? Because that's just the best, and I love that so much. But it wouldn't truly be a comic book game if it didn't make a lot of these ideas that we have about superheroes really codified. So our earliest heroes are the gold generation, just like the gold generation of comics, where you have unpowered heroes that have put on a mask in order to fight some Nazis or stop some criminals. They gave it up to the silver generation, which has your super powered individuals that have become so grand that they go on space adventures and go up against types like Doctor Doom and it gives you an awesome opportunity and a ton of permission to break out those ridiculous, wonderful villain monologues. The third generation of heroes, and I'm sure some of you have already guessed what they're going to be called, is the Bronze Generation, which is just like those 90s comics where they're angry and, and bloody and they're all called Blood Soak Fighter Knife. And they've lost all of their idea of like what it is to be a hero and are into these like darker setups and grittier stories. By modeling each generation of superheroes on a kind of known generation of comics, it gives you the impression that this story that you're telling right now is just the latest comic in an ongoing run. It makes it really easy when you're introduced to a hero or a villain to kind of understand where they'd be coming from and what their publication history would have looked like. Because you can immediately say, oh, this is someone who was around in the Silver Generation and still doing work in the Bronze Generation. So maybe they became a darker uh, sort of anti-hero type and they got an all-leather outfit. And are they still fighting? Okay, cool. And then when you're introduced to a Gold Generation hero, it means something, because they've been at this for a very long time. All of these older heroes put a ton of influence on the teenage characters, and that makes it just so difficult for them to do what they have to do. Which is maybe the best lesson in all of superhero comics, that things are only really interesting if it's hard for you to be doing them. So not having unconditional support is just the best structural story thing you can have in a teenage superhero comic. The last thing I want to talk about is the first thing that you do in Masks, which is creating your character. Making your character is really, really quick. Once you're experienced with the game, you can do it in probably 10-15 minutes per person, uh, including some little introductions of the characters. Those introductions end up being actually really fun because the game gives you a whole bunch of awesome hooks to talk about and ties you in really well with the other players at the table. It's also an opportunity to add some fiction to the setting because a lot of the things that you do uh, creates NPCs that you can then come back to and build into your stories. Instead of using point buy like a lot of the classic superhero games have used, you have something called playbooks, which is basically like a character sheet that's most of the way filled in already. The playbooks are designed around the general arc of various different superhero types. And there's a whole bunch of them, which is awesome. But wonderfully, each of those archetypes and stories can be told in dozens of different ways. I one time sat down with a couple of people and each of us chose the same playbook and just kind of worked independently on it and then looked at them 
and lo and behold, four radically different characters. You could totally see a comic actually involving all four of them. It totally would have worked. But at your table, you'll probably have people all from different ones. There isn't the need for party balance that's in D&D or some of the more tactical games, but you just don't want everyone stepping on each other's feet. The core playbooks for Masks, and I'm going to be doing a video on each of them individually, are The Beacon, The Bull, The Delinquent, The Doomed, The Janus, The Legacy, the Nova, the Outsider, the Protege, and the Transformed. Each of those playbooks have their own unique story and their own unique mechanics and are basically how you build forward into your character. You might be able to tell from the names of some of them what exactly is going on with them. Some of them are pretty obvious, like the Transformed, your uh, Transformed, and the main arc you're going to be tackling is how your transformation makes you different from other people. Kind of that X-Men hated and feared thing. These are all just wonderful stories. The Janus is your classic Spider-Man that's balancing real-world obligations and superheroics. The Bull is a great Wolverine that has a rival and a love that they're trying to impress. The Nova is just a font of power that could explode and destroy everything. And the Doomed is a potentially really dark, tragic story about a character going and ultimately facing their doom or succeeding. And that's what makes all of these cool is they're all built in stories that design your character around having a story to begin with. You might not end up just doing that playbook, there's opportunities in advancement to change playbooks along the way, and narrative things may also make demands on you. A protege that loses their mentor is possibly not the protege anymore. They've got other stuff going on. But ultimately, you create a character by picking up one of these playbooks, the one that story interests you the most, and then following how it is designed to bring you through. It gives you suggestions of abilities, it gives you mechanical moves that change the fiction and it tells you your starting labels. Okay, I lied before when I said I was not gonna talk about any more stuff that's really cool. Labels are amazing. Labels are the stats of your character, but they shift during play. It's how much your character associates themselves and how much the world associates themselves with a certain, well, label. Do people think that you're dangerous, a freak, superior, a savior, or just mundane? And those labels all shift during play because you're teenagers and the world tells you all sorts of things about who you are and how you should understand the world. And that's just the coolest. When your character goes through a time that they feel more dangerous, when they go through a time that everyone's telling them they're dangerous, they are. And they're better in fights. And that's amazing. Hey, speaking of fights, oh, last thing. I know I said I was going to be done. I'm not quite done. Instead of an HP system, Masks has a condition system, which basically is a set of five emotional states that could be affecting your character. So when your character gets hit in the game, instead of looking at how many HP they've lost, you're looking at like, hey, do they feel angry? Do they feel afraid? Do they feel hopeless? And those have an effect on how well you roll other moves. If you're afraid, it's really hard to punch Galactus. If you're angry, it's really hard to connect with your mom. And so that just makes these folding, rolling stories that are just exactly like comic books, because they just continue. They set up plot points, they set up plot hooks, they set up plot lines, and some of them resolve and some of them don't, and you just move beautifully from one to the next to the next. I love this game. I'm a game designer, and I play a lot of games, and this is my favorite, hands down, no question. If you love superheroes, you owe it to yourself to play this game. But before I just get like really sappy and spend the rest of the time talking about how much this game means to me, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. There's going to be a whole bunch of other videos about masks uh, going into the different playbooks, how moves work, a lot of GM advice, a lot of player advice. There's going to be everything. I've got content for probably years going forward, so uh, keep tuning in. I'm not exactly sure what the release schedule will be, but that will be in the show notes along with links and other bits of information. If you'd like to keep up with more of my stuff, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you know when new videos come out. You can also follow me on Twitter at Dr. Captain Cobalt. If you'd like to know whether I know anything about masks and want to see what it plays like, I have a podcast called Protean City Comics, which is a Masks Actual Play podcast. I also do a stream called Latin Explosion, which is a team of all Latinx players also playing Masks.
Uh, you can find that at twitch.tv slash latinexplosion. That's all we've got for today, so until next time, be a force of good in a world that hates and fears you. Bye, folks.